Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Today, instead of building something, we'll look at one of my favourite toys, which is this. A WinRadio G31 DDC shortwave receiver. So what makes this receiver so special? Well, this receiver is one of the newfangled types of receivers known as a software-defined radio. So what does that really mean? Well, what it means is that it's simple, it's low cost, and it's very flexible. So on the back you will see that there is a proprietary USB connection, you connect it to a computer and you can receive signals with it. How it works is that the antenna socket goes through inside a small bandpass filter, the minimum of analog amplification, and then into a high rate analog to digital converter. In this case it's a 100 mega sample per second 16 bit analog to digital converter. The output from that gets passed into an FPGA which runs certain algorithms to decimate and downsample. That's why it's called DDC, Digital Down Conversion, um, to convert the high bitrate data that you get from the analog to digital converter to a much lower bitrate stream which comes out of the USB socket to the computer which then further gets down converted by the computer's CPU and demodulated in software. So this allows you to be quite flexible with the modes that you decode and how you uh, manage the spectrum. So conversely, if you look at a normal conventional radio, a conventional radio requires a lot of analog electronics, things like oscillators, mixers and filters, which can be quite expensive and need to be tuned. Whereas in this case, uh, most of the demodulation and down conversion is done in software, which means that it can be fairly cheap and extremely efficient. So filters are a lot sharper than they are in analog because you can run uh, filters in digital which are iterative and therefore they can be extremely steep. The other advantage we have over an analog receiver is the ability to record a wide spectrum. So this thing sends a whole 2 megahertz spectrum through the USB um, connection and with that 2 megahertz of spectrum you can record and play that back and you can retune around in that spectrum when you're playing back. So that's one advantage you don't have with an ordinary receiver. Another advantage you have um, that an ordinary receiver doesn't is a live view of the spectrum. So you can actually see where the activity is and what the signal intensity is like in the spectrum. So instead of uh, not knowing that, say, somebody is transmitting on a channel just next to you, you can actually see where the activity is. And that changes how you use the radio. It is literally now point and click and you can tune. There are several other advantages. You can have several demodulators. Um, but predominantly what's most interesting is the ability to record the spectrum because I'm mostly uh, monitoring utilities and it's quite nice to be able to just record some spectrum down, especially when there are good reception conditions and review it later. So this radio is definitely a uh, very affordable and fairly powerful tool compared to my ICR75 it costs pretty much the same but this thing uh, beats it by miles it really does put the conventional receiver to shame shortwave or high frequency is interesting to me because it is one of the bands which are available worldwide in essence a signal on HF can propagate around the world without the need of relay stations or retransmitters or satellites by merely bouncing off the ionosphere and this allows you to receive signals from a long way away which can be quite interesting so our focus will mostly be on utility signals um, as opposed to broadcast signals as the broadcast signals are fairly uh, powerful and strong and they are there almost all the time whereas utility signals are more interesting because they are only there some of the time and they're usually quite a bit weaker. Okay so why don't we go to the software now and I'll show you what can be done in the software and later on I'll be posting a few more videos of signals and I can show you what the spectrums look like thanks to the SDR so you can get a bit of a feel of what sort of signals are available on shortwave. So here we see the Win Radio interface. At the moment we're receiving a Radio Australia broadcast. In the bottom window you get to see the 0 to 50 MHz waterfall display 
This can be changed to a spectrum, but I prefer waterfall. You can see control. that we can we zoom in and we can scroll programs. around in that. You can also do the same with the window possible. above, which shows the actual DDC bandwidth. So the bottom one is just the full spectrum, the top one is the DDC bandwidth, which is currently set to 2 MHz. So you, there you can see the spectrum view. So the top one can also be toggled into spectrum view, but I don't prefer that. So here is some live reception, and in this case it's an upper sideband transmission. You can, cle you can clearly see it in the waterfall. Um, we will show you that you can scroll around. This is zoomed in into the 2 MHz of DDC bandwidth. There are some periodic lines, that's from interference from other electronic sources. So let's find another signal to play with. So you can see there's a signal nearby, that's an AM signal. Let's just switch to synchronous AM. Uh, this signal is coming from a transmitter in the USA and at the moment it's around afternoon time so the signal reception is not great but at least you can hear something. We've just adjusted the, uh, the bandwidth of the demodulator there in real time just by clicking and we've enabled an audio frequency filter just with one click. So as you can see, it is very very flexible. We can zoom out and we can see the entire 2 MHz bandwidth. We can click anywhere along the bottom and retune that 2 MHz bandwidth to anywhere else. So keep in mind we can actually record and play back this whole 2 MHz spectrum. So it makes for quite interesting viewing when we play back. So here we show the performance of the receiver in low frequency. At the moment it is tuned to Richmond um, Airfield and this is the automatic terminal information service. Likewise we can easily retune it with a click and here is Bankstown and Sydney Terminal Information Service. This is combined with the beacon in the low frequency uh, spectrum. So you can see we can eliminate some noise by reducing the um, demodulator bandwidth and in synchronous AM just by deselecting one of the two sidebands of an AM transmission. Pretty cool, huh? So here we go into the AM spectrum and many of you would have listened to AM radio before but did you know it can actually sound much much better? Just watch and see. The, tr the transport is so as you can see we've widened life. the bandwidth and it, it sounds sometimes. much much better uh, in fact am radio can escape? sound pretty and, close and to fm radio and tough, and so here that's what we tune around some of the local uh, stations uh, like 576 news radio 702 to last season yeah, maybe so a little bit so more forth. form today. So as you can and, see, you know, more seeing the signals on the screen everyone, uh, and being able to tune really on them with one click, really well and, eliminating uh, interference uh, by just dragging a few handles around. And, um, you know, this fun. thing is unreal hey, compared to any conventional receiver. That's why it's one of my favourite toys. And they're probably most famous for their ales, but they've just proved that you can teach an old dog new tricks with their new beer called Cooper's Clear. And if you haven't tasted it yet, plant yourself in a beer garden and give it a try. It's Cooper's, but not as you know it, a dry, low-carb beer that's easy to drink and perfect for an afternoon with your mates. Cooper's Clear, refreshingly different, yet still refreshingly Cooper's.